So this is the website. Learning Lands is a digital platform run by Cultural Infusion. Some schools are familiar with Cultural Infusion because they've been running live events in schools across Australia for 10, over 10 years, as in live cultural events of different performers and artists. But they've created a digital platform and we've partnered with them. And the, the, these are the other resources here about intercultural understanding. And here is the Mungo Explorer resource. So it doesn't look like much sitting there as it is, but once we get inside, it's very rich and very deep material. Um, so it, as a teacher, for people that want to be able to get an overview of the actual curriculum content, if you register here for free, um, just put your details in. You don't get any bombarded with anything. You just get access to, to the information. And then we can, uh, for those of you, I'll get you to put it in the chat after, for anyone that would like to access, you know, a free access for, for a week or so, I'm happy to upgrade that uh, registration for you guys to have a look. So I will now log in and we'll go straight into the content. Um, and we're now in the, in the dashboard you'll see all the different projects from Cultural Infusion. We're going to Mungo Explorer. The students actually get added here. So the students have their own uh, platform on, on this uh, site. And they obviously don't see the teacher lessons and the lesson plans and all this sort of stuff. So once we're in here, this is where all the content sits. So you'll get a, what, what Jackie, who is a curriculum writer, was a principal in South Australia for over 20 years. She herself was, was mentored by one of the key Ghana elders from South Australia, um, has fostered Aboriginal kids, has run schools with large Indigenous um, populations, has mentored key Indigenous educators, including Stephanie Armstrong. I think she's up around your way, Vicky. So Vicky, she, well, Jackie comes with a lot of credibility from... Uh, from Aboriginal people, which is very rare to find that a, a curriculum writer who's not Indigenous to be supported in this area. And more importantly, or just as importantly as that, she is, she's been embedding Indigenous perspectives in her schools for over 20 years. So she understands, and as much as a non-Indigenous person can, you know, how to deliver some of this into a classroom. So this curriculum has been united with the strength of dad's work and resource and the, you know, his, side, his story with a curriculum writer who has embedded Aboriginal perspectives inside of the, inside of the content. So we start off with a, a cultural information sheet and just some basic information there to, to give the teacher. Teachers don't have time to do a lot of research unless it's a very passionate teacher. There's just not the time to, to go looking for all this stuff. In the year seven program, the ancient world, which as you can see is matched to the curriculum, if people are familiar with that curriculum, the overview, which is the um, human antiquity, which is the big picture about where humanity originated from. And then the students get to do a term of a depth study. Well, they're doing Greece and China and Egypt, as I mentioned, but what we're wanting to do and what we have now have an opportunity to do because the resources here, it hasn't been here before. Teachers have not been able to open up the Australian history section because I've been at conferences where two or 300 teachers talking about this issue, they can't teach Aboriginal culture. And so when an Indigenous person or local people come in as, the, as what is happening and what needs to happen, then the teacher is left often not knowing what to do next. And they don't, they leave it to the Indigenous person. So they don't even have the conversation other than a couple of lessons about carbon dating Mungo Man, as David said, you know. So I'm about to hopefully in a very short time be able to share with you the depth of what can be focused on at Mungo. And when you take a deep dive into one site, you see the whole picture opens up, the land, the culture, the science, the, the clashes of perspectives, um, governments, pastoralists, earth, environment, fire, earth, air, water. It's all in here. It's extraordinary. So in the human over, Jackie's actually written to the curriculum. This is really the Outer Africa section, which is not about Mungo, but there's a DVD. There's one or two resources we recommend, plus whatever's here, the rest of it's all here. 
this one we do recommend the BBC out of Africa. And then once you've done that, you've covered off your human antiquity for the year and you go into Mungo. So at Mungo, we're looking at evidence and we, we go into the, um, uh, the archeological area. Then we're looking at the ancient lifestyles and the, the land story and the ice age story. And of course the Aboriginal story is woven throughout the whole thing. And then there'll be the fourth unit, which will be the current uh, story, which is in the year seven, it's the legacy. In the year four, I think it's called First Contacts. Um, and we've just, you know, worked with the curriculum and elaborated. So you can look at the year four overview. Teachers that want to look at the summary, you'll see in these little pages here, you'll get all the general capabilities and how, you know, where the inquiry questions that students can go into. So I'm going over this very quickly. These sessions are recorded. Um, and what you can do, as I said, I'm happy to upgrade any registrations and give you access and, and talk you through it as well, if that's something you're interested in. So we have the teacher resource for year four, which is called First Contacts. And underneath that, the, the year seven unit. So again, they're both, what, what that Jackie's, Jackie really built on the eight Aboriginal ways of learning, if anyone has heard of that. And if you haven't heard of that, it's a really beautiful pedagogy, Indigenous created pedagogy about um, integrating uh, ways of learning. So she's, she's, she's very familiar with that and, and has run her curriculum. And you won't see maps of that, that pedagogy in here. It's just in, inherent in it. And one of the big things is sort of giving the big picture. So each unit, she'll start off with the big picture. Then it'll be deconstructed through the archaeology and the, the land story and then rewoven back in the fourth uh, unit in the current lifestyles. So... Um, Modern science meets ancient history. This is a primary school unit. And in here we have two lessons. You'll see um, Vicky's grandmother there, Alice Kelly and, and uh, Alice Bugney, both there. Um, and then in here, I actually wrote a little story about my father who's a discoverer. So story becomes, um, you know, the first thing a primary school student is introduced to because story was the way um, history was passed on through Aboriginal culture. So that's, you'll see a lesson plan. And in this case, there's actually a story written here. And then, the, then there'll be a, a worksheet for the teacher, a teacher reference sheet to help the teacher become a bit inspired. And look, a lot of, a lot of teachers from what I can understand a lot of teachers are doing some of this in more indigenous perspectives whether it's mind mapping or storytelling or yarning circles you know the teachers are integrating a lot of this work but there's a you know these are these are just stories these are teacher reference sheets to help just stimulate the ideas for teacher for the teachers there are many ways that class teacher can revisit stories so how how to use that lesson what we have here is about 13 or 14 lessons and a teacher can pick and choose. So in primary section, we have the story area, then it will go into the archeology. span Primary school teachers, if there are some here, I think there are, they, people that have looked at this really love this resource because it gives you the, it's multidisciplinary. So you're looking at science, you're doing history, geography, art, right, literacy, numeracy, it's all in here. So it's a great unit to, to do for a term or so. When you get into the um, science and archaeology, so what she's done, she's gone to the big story, then going into the sort of cognitive, the, the concrete sort of evidence. So you'll see three lessons here, discovering the first Australians, fossils, artifacts, what do geologists do? So that's a lesson plan for the teacher more lesson plans. This is on the elements and then the significant of the burials. So you can see the lesson plans are very easy to access. You can adapt them in the classroom or you can just, you know, pick and choose a few lessons if you, depending on your time. What I'm clicking on now is just on the left-hand side is a slideshow. So this is what students will access. And in here, there will be this video. That's a six minute video that gives you an overview of the story. 
then it's we're going through as as Vicky said, you know, and nothing compares to being with Vicky out <laughs> at Mungo. So we can't we can't replicate that. That's a very precious and powerful opportunity. But we need to get into the classroom. So the students, so more than five percent of teachers know, you know, uh, uh, know the the deep story at Mungo. Um, so you'll start to, there's a couple of links here back to the original uh, Mungo website that has other content on here. But the students are taken through understanding what the lunette is. You know, lunettes are a little, you know, what do these, what do these remind you of? This is the lunette that, and that, and I'm using the word like everyone knows about it, but it's actually called a lunette and apparently they're unique to Australia. That's the, the it's, to me, I, I think Dad says it's not a fossil sand dune, but it, it hasn't moved much in 40,000 years. So that is the sand dune that's wrapped itself around the lake. And that's, that's what's giving us this story, the lake and this sand dune. The country is giving the story, holding the story. So there's about, I don't know, 60, 80 slides here. Do you think this would be useful for students to be looking at? So they'll go through archaeology, how that happened, and then um, unpack the different fire. You know, if we ask a student, what, what is a fossil? They'll probably say some bones or a rock. Um, at Mungo, you have all of this here. You have the fireplaces, as Vicky's saying, the fish bones, the human remains, the fish, the animal remains. So these are, you know, these are these, and this is all photos and narrative from dad's original CD. So you've got the fire fossils, you've got the tools, of course, the stone tools, you've got the, so these are records of lifestyles and, you know, students are, are able to then get some cognitive understanding of an imagery around what's really out there. And then this whole knowledge base just gets developed and deepened. So then that'll go through there. There's all those images. Um, again, as I said, I'll, I'll offer you that access so you can take time to look for yourself. There's quite a lot there. It starts unpacking the actual discovery. And then you'll see down the bottom that I'm, I'm whizzing through all this is clearly. Um, you, there are videos. So there'll be videos here of uh, you know, there's one of dad and not the record. Um, all right. Uh, I'll play this. If it comes up quickly enough. Um, you will see he has his geological, you know, knife there. I was out there once with him and Vicky and, you know, he was touching the ground with the knife and she, you know, she was a bit cranky with that. So it was, there's, a, there's the, the difference with the cultural, uh, for him it was his tool that he, you know, used to scrape away things. Well, the burial sites are absolutely fascinating and, and there's a long story associated with the burial sites. But the two main burial sites that are in this landscape directly behind us, uh, they, they have actually changed the, the story of Australian occupation. And it's not just the antiquity, which is back beyond, certainly beyond 26,000, I believe, the male, the big burial, the Mungo Man site up here, Mungo 3, as he's sometimes called, is almost certainly 36,000 years old. 36,000 years. How do we get our mind around that? That's the first, that's the first dramatic example. But the next feature is these, these burials were, had been treated in a, in a, you know, with great ritual. The man, for example, fully articulated, a big man, bigger than you, Mike, about six, nearly, six, nearly two metres tall. He'd been buried in a fully articulated fashion in a grave dug in the sand, in the beach sand on the downwind side of the dune over there. And his body had been painted in ochre, uh, whether the painted anointing on the flesh itself or sprinkling over the grave, it's hard to tell. 
and that at 36,000 years ago. Now, modern people weren't even in Europe at that time, or were just coming into Europe, let alone uh, having such a sophisticated uh, concept of death. And the anointing of the body, does that not speak of some sort of cultural uh, reality of life, of an afterlife? So here were these people 36,000 years ago, certainly with a, 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 a level of cultural sophistication that is absolutely mind-boggling. And um, they were living with and, and, li and, as it were, living, loving and dying on the very shores on which we're sitting 36,000 years ago. Now, somehow, that has to be absorbed into the psyche, the mental understanding of every Australian. We often think we have not much Australian history. We've got in, in Vic, Victoria, well, Ned Kelly and Farlap, you know, great icons. But we don't realise that we're sitting on this immense depth of rich human and landscape history, and it's popping out of the earth here in Mungo in front of us. How was that? I mean, you can see, so next to that video, it does say the dating has changed since that was recorded. And as I, as I mentioned to you, this was done quite a while ago, but all of, there's about nine videos of dad speaking and all of them are completely relevant to today. We still haven't got the message. Um, some of them will be on climate change. Others will be, there's a, there's a bunch of different things. So that's, that's in the unit of unpacking the past. Then you'll have the, um, you know, the land story and the ice age and, and so some teachers when we're doing trials of this teachers are a bit shy to go into this area because they, they haven't been trained in any of these topics um, but it's the worksheet the the teacher reference sheet the material the less the the student activity sheet it's all there for you so if schools are really doing uh, inquiry based and they want it much more open-ended you know you can just use these worksheets as as um uh, study sheets or teacher plans as lesson plans as ideas to bounce off um, but it is an inquiry-based curriculum so they will go into looking at a very basic map and then there's a story of the lake and you know we're starting to look at the land going back you know 300 to 250,000 years and and just getting a bigger picture of of, of country in a very different way to how Vicky's talking about it, by, but, but getting more scientific knowledge and some basic understanding when culture is brought into that, how much more respect and awareness is a student going to have? So again, that's another study sheet for the teacher to support their knowledge in that area. Um, and I will show you the final unit in the year four, and then I'll quickly go to the year seven. So the living descendants today uh, and the impact on Aboriginal history. In the primary school, they're trying to look at the first contacts between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people and the, and the impact. So there'll be lessons around that, around what the landscape used to look like, about how it's been managed with pastoralists, about, um, you know, that people's impact as well. Look, there's a couple of things. There's so much in this unit and hopefully, you know, the message will get out and we have champions out there that'll help schools open up their curriculum, start to work with this material. Um, so many things that Vicky mentioned, like country and spirituality. How do you, how do you go anywhere near Aboriginal history if you, if you can't, if you can't have a conversation about these things? And, um, you know, a lot of the other than culture, a lot of the aware looking at Aboriginal history comes back to just as, as David mentioned, looking at Mungo Man and carbon dating. But there's so much more in here. So in the year four, there's a this is the impact of European contact. So that's a lesson in there. And these lessons are all developmental. They're built in a sort of spiral curriculum, building on each other. What is our relationship with the land and how significant are our roles in Australian history? So there's a little worksheet here that is, uh, is it in this one? Um, I'm waiting to see. Oh, this, this is a role play. So the students are starting to gain quite a lot of scientific knowledge. They're getting aware of the pastoralists and the elders. And, and there's a role play uh, suggested here where the students become, some become elders, some become scientists, some become pastoralists. There's little worksheets for each of them. And they start exploring those different perspectives. You know, if you were the farmer that 
found, Mungo Man was found on your farm. How, how what, what impact was that? You know, the science community, they, they handled them in a different way. The elders, they all had a different perspective. So again, you know, there's another big area and there's, there's two worksheets here that Jackie very skillfully goes into for a primary school and relevant for year seven as well, you know, the impact of European contact and you know, moving traditional people from their country to which they belonged, it destroyed their strong spirit. You know, there's a lot, there's a really well-written, I've had principals go over this because they become very, you know, um, sensitive about how much they can deliver to young people um, in a way that needs to be spoken about when we're talking about truth telling. So that worksheet's in there. This is not just about archeology. span This story is not about archeology span as, you, as you, you guys all know. Um, so I will just go to the final lesson here to show you, and then I'll, I'll bring up a quick video. Um, where, where the young people, where the kids can really get to with this curriculum, you know, they start to really get educated about reconnecting with country and ancestors, the cultural identity strength and the spiritual well-being. There's a lesson on spiritual, exploring spiritual well-being. Um, custodianship and ownership, what's happened at Mungo as a World Heritage Site, what, you know, where was the battle for that to happen and, and what, you know, the increased opportunities that happen for the Indigenous people, the, the, talking about the World Heritage, collaboration between scientists and archaeologists, pride in being able to manage the, the local area, as we're hearing there's lots of struggles as well, increased purpose for younger people. Um, the Barkindji, Mati, Mati, Niampa people's lives have been made richer because of the discoveries of the remains of Mungo Lady and Mungo Man. Um, so there's there's another lesson there that you can review if it's if it's your area and something you want to look at. Again, we go to the slideshow for the students and there's worksheets for the students. Every second lesson has a, a study sheet. So for a teacher that just wants to get in and get into this topic, we've done the work for you. For a teacher that's got curriculum already and you want to complement it, well, it's easy to pick and choose. There's another big slideshow about the country, what it looks like. You know, we can't be out on country, but just bringing that up in a classroom, asking the kids to, you know, what made these marks? What, what created the ripples? Just that, that simple connection to the, the, the interaction between water and wind and land, sand. You know, what made this? How did this get created? These are the layers at, at Mungo. You'll see you know, the time layers, they out there in some areas, they, the color difference is so strong. You can really see the different age groups in the soil. Um, artifacts found this deep below. I mean, how, how incredible is that? There's a midden down here. This is what's being exposed at Mungo. There, there it is exposed in those, in those, in that lunette, the fireplace. So that's all there. So lots of information, um, and then the social issues. Um, you know, it's in a limited view, but but that's but, but being able to get this into the classroom is, is uh, I'm just looking for the videos. So I'll find them. Oh, here's one. Eh. I'm about to go out of that. David, see what lot is this? It's Auntie Lottie, who's an amazing uh, woman who's been involved for many, many years. So there's three, and as Vicky said, you know, when, in the early days, and particularly way back with her, her grandmother, there was a lot of strong women that came forward. And when Dad was making this recording, it, again, it was still the women that were very vocal and present. I don't think it affected me in any way that you were looking at our history. Because I rather liked that thought that these people of mine were there for the so long. And I think I was really pleased to learn about it. Otherwise, we would never have known. That's how I look at it. Even today, I think there should still be more studies on my people's, some of the remains. I mean, you don't need a lot, 
only just a few things these days to study those remains. You can always study, they say, around the fireplace, but I don't think that tells you as much as it would studying my ancient people. So that, that's just a very skimmed through overview in the years, year four. There's about, I think there's 13 or 14 lessons there. When you go to the year seven, you'll see the ancient um, uh, human antiquity. I won't, I'll just go into that quickly to show you what, how Jackie's setting this up. For those of you that are year seven teachers, you'll recognize some of this. Um, you can really run this unit and cover off that human antiquity as you look at the, the big picture out of Africa, there is uh, in the BBC out of Africa um, video, which you can buy, or you can actually access it online for free, I believe. Um, there is 10, 15 minutes on Mungo in Australia. So it links into that. And it does talk about climate change and how human movement is, is precipitated by the changing climate. Um, so, but what I'm wanting to show you here is Oh, sorry, I mean that one. So she's got something there called the Knowledge Bank, which is you know documenting their their work across the curriculum. Um, actually, we'll go into the, you, you can have a look at that. That's the out of Africa area. That's in the first human antiquity. We'll go into the Australian Mungo archaeological site because students have to study an archaeological site. So here we start getting the three lessons here, the early evidence, the discoveries, and the source, source of evidence. When you go into one of, you know, when you start unpacking these particular lesson plans, there, as I said, there's a teacher reference sheet to help the teacher. There'll be a study sheet for those students. I'm obviously not even beginning to share with you what she's doing in these lessons because we don't have time. But what I do want to show you, if a school is doing an inquiry curriculum, how, how is a student at the beginning of studying Lake Mungo going to be able to ask a question when th there's such limited knowledge about what Mungo can offer other than Mungo man and Mungo lady and carbon dating? You know, that, that, that's what's out there at the moment. So there's a, there's a worksheet for a student. Now, what do I really want to find out here? Um, and I'm just talking about in the science area, the cultural story is a very different thing. And, and Vicky's work is, you know, what, what Vicky and the, the indigenous people in the communities at Mungo are, are doing is sharing their culture. But we need to be able to give tools to the teacher to open up these conversations. So here's a worksheet um, for the student that'll start giving them a whole bunch of ideas of questions that, that, that they can explore. Do they want to look for why, you know, is Ice Age Australia interesting? Human remains, is the conflict between science and indigenous traditions interesting? Um, should they dig or not to dig? Well, that's, that's a question that's, um, you know, a, a big challenging question. The ritual burials and what is the significance of them? There's another little bit of area of information, which I won't go into it, but it's another incredible story at Mungo Day. I could tell you about, a bunch about it. But the earth, the flip of the magnetic field of the poles is documented in the fireplaces at Mungo. So, you know, for your science geek students, <laughs> David, and um, not you, but, you know, the students that, that like and they, you know, get the kind of the curriculum is written for gifted students and for kids that struggle. I mean, she's a very skilled curriculum writer. And I've had that feedback that the assessments are just really um, good because they're differentiated. Does, does that you teachers would know what that means? I'm really not across it, but they, that's what they are. So you can see the archaeology. Let me go into the Ice Age area. So redesigning human human similarities across time and place. We're you're trying to bring in Aboriginal culture and the traditional people that might come and share in your school. And then how do you, how do you continue that conversation, that deep, that richness? So there's another lesson there. What is human about human beings throughout time and across cultures? And there's a really good worksheet, nothing like Vicky's one that she showed us of, um, of the, the, the sacredness of the land and the people, sacred story and the physical presence. But there's a, you know, there's a mind mapping idea. 
for aspects of culture. So this, this kind of worksheet with the technology, the education, the art, the, the law rules for living, then meeting their needs, their beliefs, their social, you know, it's a great little worksheet to run across the whole year when you're doing Greece, India, China, um, it, that, that whole what is common about cultures. You know, there, there's some really rich material inside of this area. And I know I'm gonna be overwhelming you because I'm just whizzing through the whole thing. If we go into the climate change and the Ice Age story, again, we've done all the archeology span in the previous unit. Um, we're now coming into really trying to understand the environment story. And the students need to use their imagination as well. You know, everywhere the sun, moon and stars, the climate and weather has meaning for people. Though meaning varies, we are alike in all countries and tribes and trying to read the sky, land and sea. So we're not looking at Aboriginal history as something that's not connected to us. I mean, I think the, the, the founding message with this work is what, we, what you're teaching students and, and teachers and schools is that this story, as we all know, is so relevant to today. You know, the issues that we've seen over the last year about the land and management of the land and, you know, or, or the Black Lives Matter and all these issues that are, are so much at the forefront. Um, so this is just helping get some knowledge into the classroom in a way that's very easy to deliver. Um, so I'm trying to get to a graph here. Like I said, the teacher does need a few hours to go through this just to see what you're going to use. Um, but in here is another study sheet for the students, which we've got the land story and then it's going to go into, you know, what the environment was doing 150,000 years ago. And this map here. So that's that 120,000 year cycle I, I talked about before, 120, 30,000 years. Um, the water table was similar to what it is today. Here we are today. So this is the rise and fall of the water. And that cycle is actually, you don't need to go into the classroom, but just for your own sake, that cycle has repeated itself three times naturally. And now we have this human occupation sort of accelerated. And for the first time ever, humans are impacting climate change, as we all know. So here's another relevant message in this curriculum. Um, but as the kids start to unpack this graph, we're starting to go back and the peak of the ice age, which is written in that last story, is at 20,000 years, 20, years ago. This, this graph, it's actually not on this one, it's on another one. Is that, that is at, the water table here is 100 metres lower at 20,000 years ago than it is today, 100 metres lower. So, you know, that's why Tasmania was connected to Australia. The water was all caught up in ice caps. So there was no rain in Australia and, and there was no woolly mammoths and great ice fields. It just became a desert, a windy, cold desert. So how did that, you know, Mungo Man and Mungo Lady were here 40 plus thousand years ago. How did, how did people survive that? You know, so the kids are really given an opportunity to, um, to get that bigger, land story through the science and then have a you know how use their imagination to really see what was happening with the climate Brid bridging climate change and human the human story um i will go into the last unit here the legacy of mungo uh and how how significant it is for us all to draw lessons from Indigenous history and Indigenous culture and, and Indigenous ways of living perspectives. It's so critical for our culture, for our earth, for our mental health, for each other. How can we improve our current life and health of our planet by applying ancient wisdom? So the kids are taken through, there's a couple of other lessons in there, um, you know, where they're using metaphor and poetry uh, where they start to become more symbolic and abstract in their thinking. And then they bring it all together in this last uh, unit where they will produce a, you know, a large piece of work. And again, it could be anything along the lines of the earth and climate change, um, the people's impact upon the climate, the realization that we need more respect for Aboriginal First Australians, um, commitment to reconciliation, what might that look like now? And what does it mean? 
um, a balanced lifestyle, a sense of well-being and spiritual beliefs, a deeper understanding of the environment. So suddenly this story at Mungo has gone from Mungo Man and Carbon Dating to something incredibly rich and profound and deep and holistic. Um, okay, so because I've been to Mungo, um, I have just included some of my, my Mungo photo, photos in this. Um, and you, what Jenny was saying about seeing those different layers with the different colours, it's mm. really important. Um, one of the most exciting things or things that I love doing the most is, and you can see these are Aunty Vicky's feet. Sorry, Aunty Vicky, I didn't ask. Um, but you actually take your shoes off and you go walking on country. Um, and, you know, if you think about how you felt earlier this morning, running your hands through country and feeling country and connecting with country, walking on country um, is a pretty amazing thing too. Um, yeah, very, very happy. <laughs> But that idea of connecting to that place and seeing, you can see these, you know, bones that are there and the idea of time moves away. So, you know, for me, this is why I love Mungo. Um, one of the most beautiful times of the day is as the sun setting. And I actually grew up about 100 k's from Mungo. So that's why, I'm, you know, and we used to visit it just for fun. Um, and to have a look around and at sunset the colors just come to the surface and it's just amazing so if you do visit Mungo you have to visit not just for a day trip you have to be there at different times of the day so sunset is absolutely amazing and if you find a spot to lay down in the middle of where the lakes are or, or wherever you're staying and look at the stars so there's this flat flat lake bed and if you just look at the stars, there's just zillions of stars. Um, and that's the one thing that I miss when I came to the city is not being able to see the stars in the sky because of all the light pollution. Mm. And any astronomer that's been out there um, is just absolutely blown away with the number of stars you can see in the sky. Um, you've also if you get to experience the sunrise coming up over the lunettes, that's a pretty amazing experience. And you'll have all the kangaroos and emus keeping you company as well. So the sort of sunrise, sunset and the night sky. Um, here, and I used to grow up camping on the Murrumbidgee and on the Murray. So the photo on the left is actually the Murrumbidgee, which is, this is um, an area which is very close to the birthing tree that Aunty Vicky was talking about. And the picture on the right is through the uh, Naya Forest, which is just off, um, just, a, you know, short, not far from where Aunty Vicky lives. And sort of to see the, the flooding and, and everything that there, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, um, if we're talking about we're talking about ceremony, you can look at you can see in this photo, and I hadn't realised until probably about a year or two ago that there was that scorched earth beside it for a fire. And having you know been to a smoking ceremony and knowing how important that is, that just puts another layer of complexity to the reverence that they felt for this man. Um, and that change from being, you know, how complex this society is to, to have, you know, complex um, ceremonies like this, it's, it just blows my mind. Um, Mungo, there, there's also, so you've got the Walls of China, which I don't like using the name, but I don't know if there's a, a traditional name for it. I'd like to be able to use that. Um, but then there's also the footprints and the footprints are another thing that's mm. really worth looking So if you hadn't had a chance to have, to learn about the footprints, that's your homework is, is find out about those. Um, all right. So what I've got is I've got some Victorian resources. So this is where you can go to get lots more info. Um, your curriculum priorities, cross-curriculum priorities. Sorry to the... Um, 
people that aren't from Victoria, this is still maybe useful to you. Um, protocols, which is important. Um, Culture Victoria has lots of great stuff. Um, and one of the best things you can do is Nyanella Listen continuously, which is creation stories. So they've actually got creation stories that talk about, um, there's one down Gunditch Mara country, which talks about um, the actual lava flow and the, explo and the explosion. Um, there's ones that are, I think it's a Wadi Wadi one, which is talking about the Murray and the creation around the Murray. So, and this is stories that you can take into your classroom and share. Um, so if you just go to Culture Victoria, you can actually download this little book. Um, so it's really great because you think about it as starting as a story, but then you can go, well, okay, let's look at what's happening geologically at that time. Let's looking, um, how are people using story? Are they telling um, us about what's happened? Are they telling us about how to act? So it, you can go into a lot more detail with these. And it's also got language in it as well. And it talks about how to pronounce, which is, is good too. Um, Curry Heritage Trust has got a whole heap of um, online stuff now. So you can hear stories um, from elders. Um, also a great place. That's where I've learned to weave. So um, really good. Banjalaka. Um, as, as with most online stuff, they're pivoting at the moment and they're putting some more stuff online. So at least country schools and that are able to virtually visit these places. Um, deadly story. So there's lots of stuff on Budgebim and the like the Sunbury rings, the Wurri Yang, Wurri Yellop. Um, hang on, Yuri Wurri Yu Yang, um, which is a circle which stone circle um, and it's an astrological stone circle so that's pretty cool um, on, on the way out to Geelong. Um, Vai, so Vai is really great they do a great um, newsletter every fortnight or oh, sorry every bi month so every two months and lots and lots of curriculum resources and how to bring that into but also how it fits in the Victorian context and if you haven't had a chance, you can download their calendar um, and that goes through all different places you can go, what the significant dates are. Um, so yeah, worth having. Um, Aboriginal Victoria have got the cultural heritage fact sheets. So that's things like scar trees, um, mounds, middens, stone tools, um, ground edge axes. Victoria was one of the places where they had the greenstone axe. So a very, very um, strong axe, which was traded all over Australia, um, rock art, all that sort of stuff. So if you want to go somewhere to find out some cultural um, or the cultural fact sheets about different places in Victoria, then this is a, that's a spot to go. Um, yeah, Australian resources, the Narragunawali platform is a good starting point. Um, so there's lots of stuff that you can go there. So this is, if you're doing a reconciliation action plan, this is where you go. Um, student, uh, sorry, teacher PD, and there's also activities as well. So um, they're ones who also fund my position. So um, it's got good stuff. Um, so do lots, is it try, learn? Um, I think listen is probably the best word to use because you know, coming to, along to a session like today, um, that's that's the way people will learn. So there you go. That's that's my presentation. Very shortly done. <laughs>